How do we pull those pieces together? Well, that company was Dish. And we said, boy, that sounds like a lot of fun. Let's, uh, let's go workshop that. Uh, about three, four days a week of meetings, again and again and again. We eventually got to a point where we made a deal with Boost Mobile to put DIDs, decentralized identifiers, on every single phone. Eight million of them. So that's just an example. And there's so much to build on top of that. One can build wallet infrastructure. They can build a DAP store. They can do all kinds of things and bring this to the consumer's phone, just like that. Now, why us? Well, because there's peer review, there's high assurance software, and there's just a damn good community that cares about these things. The other thing is, when you think about the growth model there, where is Dish going? They're becoming an ISP. You guys know about T-Mobile, you know about Sprint, you know about Verizon. These are cell phone companies, right? Well, Dish is a telco company, and they're moving into the 5G space and connectivity. In the coming years, more than 70% of America is going to be covered by their 5G network. Well, how do you build a network like that? You build it differently. You build it with new technology. You build it with new standards. And maybe you can build it with a little bit of blockchain in it. How about they be the first ISP to figure that one out? And that's the magic and beauty of the technology that we are building here today. It's built to last and it's built to transform things. Your life as individuals, the lives of Fortune 250 companies, the lives of governments themselves. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of heroism. It takes a lot of unique advancements and developments and challenges that exist. But we're never dissuaded by that because we were born of resilience. First, as an industry that was always mocked. Second, as an ecosystem that never seems to get a fair shake in the media and never seems to get a fair consideration. And third, as people. We're here to stay. Cardano's here to stay. Voltaire and Basho are just beginnings in, to a new era, the Cardano 2025 era. Let's look at the challenges before us. In the next 10 to 20 years, there will probably be quantum computers. That's a dragon we gotta slay. Well, we're gonna do that together. In the next 10, 20 years, we're probably through this movement going to invent entirely new ways of voting and governing. We have to contend with difficult questions like confidentiality and privacy. How much privacy should you have? And under what circumstances can things be de-anonymized? These are super difficult questions because there's the rights of the individual, the rights of the society. Over the next 10 or 20 years, we see an unholy alliance between governments and corporations to create this surveillance capitalism. You see it every day with Facebook and Google and social credit in China and other places. People working together indirectly or directly where you don't own your own data. You don't own the perception of you, the metadata about you. There's going to be a pushback. The pendulum will swing in the other direction. The concepts of self-sovereign identity, of you owning yourself, your data, your identity, these things. Well, we have to figure that out. There's no rules for any of these things. We're pioneers in this respect. It's an entirely new global society. Why? Because the things that happen in Ethiopia matter here in Wyoming. The things that happen here in Wyoming matter in Chile. They matter in Japan. Humanity has never lived this way before. We've never lived with such a global commons. We were always so local. So, the next 10, 20 years, we have to figure out together how are we going to do that? How are we going to build systems that are more open? One of the most magical things about the DAP space is we're also talking a lot about liberating applications in general from the control of the few. It's not fair that Microsoft and Apple and Google collectively get to decide what you can install on your phones and computers. That's just not right. So, when you build a DAP, an DAP store, and you build these liberating models, you start poking holes in that funnel. You start loosening that death grip and control. You start having new standards. So another big component is how do we as a community come together and figure out 
how to create standards for smart contracts, standards and certification for things. So there are four tracks in this conference. During the utility track, we're going to talk a lot about that. What are the blueprints of applications? How do you get them up on a blockchain so that anybody can access them? How do you curate quality when no one's in control? There's no custodian there to say this is a safe app and that, that was built by Bob. There has to be some sort of wisdom of the crowds. It's a hugely difficult problem. Just solving it for identifying a person was called Web of Trust. We started doing that in 1991. Still not completely figured out. The good news is we're not in this alone. This is an industry-wide concern. Not just our industry, but the entire class of developers. This movement, Cardano, blockchain is about liberating every single thing it touches. It doesn't matter if it's a telecommunications company that lives in an ossified monopolistic world with tight regulations and a, well that's just the way it works and it's worked that way for a century and deal with it to an app developer who just wants to make a video game and is tired of being told they can't do microtransactions or something else because it violates an app store policy. They're united in the fact that systems beyond them are constraining and controlling their ability to innovate and create. The point of the tools and the technologies we build is first everyone is free, everyone has equal rights, and also you are liberated to live your dreams and create the things you want to create. And hopefully we're making that point. You add up MOE and DISH, that's 13 million people just there the next 12 to 24 months coming online. If you look at the community itself, it's in the millions. And we're just about ready for explosive growth. Basha will bring new technology like Mithril. Now, I fully admit that sometimes Daedalus needs to speed up a little bit.